Ahead of the February 25th presidential election, spokesperson of the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Obaka, have disguised calls for the arrest and the prosecution of Atiku Obaka as a failed attempt to intimidate and blackmail him. Our correspondent, Mary Chinda, has the details. It's the second week since the PDP presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar resumed campaigns for the year. But Atiku's campaign had been greeted by calls for his arrest by one of the spokespersons of the APC, Festus Kayamo. In today's press briefing, the PDP dismisses the claims and says it will not be joining issues as the allegations are subjudice. If you must ask for equity, you must come with clean hands. Uh, Mr. Festus Kiyamo, who happens to be in the APC government, is using the privilege of being in government and also using his own chambers, which would be a conflict of interest, to terrorize a candidate they are, they are afraid of. He was serving as a cabinet member and campaign spokesman, remember as a cabinet member is being paid by the taxpayers' money, is using the official privilege and the powers conferred on that office to intimidate agencies of government, including going to court and filing a case against the agent of the same branch of government to which he belongs. And this is happening at a time when the president told the world that he's going to deliver a legacy of free and fair election. So now it's raising concern. People are beginning to wonder whether it is the president who is, by proxy, using this cabinet member to infiltrate or influence or intimidate the agency of government. In today's press briefing, put together by Dele Momodu, Director of Strategic Communications of the PDP Presidential Campaign Council, Atiku spokespersons are calling for the arrest and probe of the APC presidential candidate Bola Ahmed Tunubu on allegations of drug-related offenses. Dalmadi Umar, if you remember vividly, the chairman of the Code of Conduct Tribunal admitted on March 24, 2016, in the case between the Federal Republic of Nigeria and Bukola Saraki, that he discharged Tinubu in error. On the discharge of the former Lagos State Governor, I quote, by the tribunal some years ago, simply because the Code of Conduct Bureau failed to fulfill the condition precedent, we have since realized we acted in error in discharging Mr. Tinubu on that ground, and we have since departed from that end, Umar said. It is therefore important for both the Code of Conduct Peru and the EFCC to revisit the case, since Tinubu is still alive, and he was never acquitted. He was only discharged. Apart from the links to drug laws, Tinubu has also cornered the finances of Lagos State through several means, including land grabbing. With the presidential elections barely 33 days away, the PDP says it is setting of victory. Mary Chinda, Arise News. All right, a lot to talk about this morning, Ayo. Opening up the morning show on a fiery note. So mm. this has been termed a number of things. Election that is not just based on the issues, but shall I call this mudslinging? Because mm. there's some, you know, according to both parties, that's the APC and the PDP, PDP in this instance, there's some merit or fact to their slinging. Mm. So this started six days ago when the APC uh, held a media, media press briefing to talk about what some people call the article gate. Well, uh, Mr. Daniel Buala came here last week and said it's not qualified to be called a gate. But irrespective of the nomenclature, they called it, um, you know, bringing up the special purpose vehicle, which, you know, many people refer to as SPV, following a leaked audio and whistleblowing by one Mr. Michael Achimugu, who claimed to be um, a, an aide to the vice president at the time, um, as Waziri Atiku Abubakar. They'd come out and they'd given an ultimatum, 72 hours, to the EFCC and other, um, organize, other related agencies to investigate, prosecute um, the APC presidential um, candidate, sorry, the PDP presidential candidate, Ozir Atiku Abubakar. I'm mixing up the names here because, you know, to, the stories are quite similar. At the end of the day, it boils down to accusations of corruption for both parties. 
Now, it is quite a shame that um, a few days to election, I mean, it's not new, a few days to election, um, some time to election, Hillary Clinton, who was Secretary of State at the time, was investigated by the FBI over leaked private emails. So it's, it's, it's not unusual to have cases like this come out against candidates of um, running for presidential seat like this. However, it is a challenge when we cannot have frontliners um, who are devoid of controversies around corruption. The BBC article a few days back highlighted the frontliners of the Nigerian presidential election in this sense, describing their um, case, the cases of corruption against them. But let, let's face today's issue in terms of the, um, the PDP's press, world press conference, um, asking the NDLEA, that's the Nigerian Drug Law Enforcement Agency, and EFCC to probe um, Ashwajibola Metinubu. The issues they've raised are not issues that are alien or perhaps foreign to a number of Nigerians. These have been in the news for a while, and indeed in interviews, we have asked spokespersons of the APC about, number one, the source of um, their presidential candidate's money, um, income, his wealth, the source of his wealth. We've asked them questions around his allegations, the allegation, or not the allegation, well, a court document linking him to a drug heroin cartel in the 80s in Chicago, whereby um, sums of money in his account were, were not commensurate to what he ought to be earning at the time as an auditor with an oil company. These are questions that the APC haven't come out to address, you know, in, in a way that Nigerians will be satisfied as to the responses. The truth is that the call for the agencies, NDLEA, EFCC, to investigate is not far from, is not far reaching. Um, when a matter like this comes to the fore, the appropriate response from agencies like this should be, number one, investigation, and then if, um, once they gather enough evidence, prosecution. As the PDP stated in their press conference, the, there's no statute of limitation against criminal cases in the Nigerian law. Therefore, despite the fact that it was many years ago, as some people might argue that, oh, it's in the, it was a long time ago, since then he's been governor um, two times, he's been senator, why is he just coming up now? It is not statute bound. At any point in time, if the evidence is sufficient and he can present it, he can be um, prosecuted as, as he ought to be. And they also stated very clearly that he's not, he doesn't have immunity since he's not a serving governor or a president. Therefore, he's not protected by immunity. Therefore, he ought to be investigated. Unfortunately, as um, you know, I was smiling when I heard, I, I believe it was Mr. Dele Momodo, the director of uh, strategic communication of the PDP, saying that he who must come to equity must come with clean hands. And I must say that the same applies to the PDP as well. Both APC and PDP have cases to answer. I believe that the most important part of this is that Nigerians are watching. The electorate is, you know, the people who are going to vote come 25th of February are watching and listening so that even if the appropriate authorities do not respond, the greatest response would be for Nigerians to judge that bearing in mind these accusations, well, I won't call them revelations because they've been out there for a while now, who should, who is fit enough to be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria come 29th of May 2023? The ball is in the court of Nigerians. Dr. Patti? Okay. <clears throat> I read a commentary on, on this by uh, Dr. Abimbola Adelak uh, in Punch of January 19. A piece titled Tinubu versus Atiku, Ojoro Kansu Ojoro. And some of the submissions made by uh, Dr. Adelak, you know, cannot even be improved upon because she's right on the spot in commenting on all of this. She says, well, you know, uh, spokespersons who always find something to do. Uh, it is uh, normal for them to feign indignation so that they can get into the news. And that much of what we're witnessing is just people huffing and puffing. And that at the end of the day, nothing will come out of it. Now, how did she make the point? She said, nobody should be surprised that no institution has even responded. After all, Kiyamo gave a, a 72 our ultimatum, the ultimatum has since passed. Nothing has happened because the agencies uh, probably just see this as just politics. It doesn't interest them, okay? Uh, and, uh, you know, so many contradictions. I would like to quote from a piece. She says, the two sides, one zero trying to balance itself on top of another zero, 
exemplifying what is wrong with Nigeria. That this is what is wrong with Nigeria, the quality of discourse that we have in this space. All of a sudden, political campaign has degenerated on both sides of the two main political parties to what is better described as argumentum ad hominem. And in this, the argumentum ad hominem, you know, uh, Dr. Adela can tell us that he will blow over. All of this went, and Nigeria will move on because nothing will come out of it. Then she concludes, I quote, both parties know that nothing will come out of their show of shame. And that is why this frivolity is so emboldened. They are, they are, okay, their poor exchange is a game of two unscrupulous players trying to even out each other's cheating. Both may find their mutual ujuro entertaining, but the discerning among us refuses to be impressed. This is the conclusion uh, by Dr. Adela Kun in that piece, Tinubu versus uh, Atiku Ojuro Council Ojuro. And of course, you can see it. the APC, they had their own world press conference. <laughs> and then the PDP has also come with their own world press conference. The APC was saying that, uh, you know, uh, Atiku Abubakar should be arrested. You know, they gave 72 hour uh, ultimatum to state agencies, they've been ignored. The PDP now has come forward to say, arrest uh, uh, Tinubu so that he doesn't turn Nigeria into uh, a, a place worse than Colombia, they argue, okay? And this is a case of everybody going to the kitchen, and in fact, they are not just throwing knives now, they have, they have uprooted the kitchen sink. They are throwing <laughs> in every uh, direction. And yet, I keep saying that this is, you know, ironic, because on both sides, you wonder, you know, what this is all about at the end of the day. I recall that Daniel Boala came here and talked about the principle of extopel with regard to some of the allegations against uh, Atiku Abubakar. Okay, but he said Boala, you know, I, I guess he's the, uh, he's, the, he's the only lawyer in that uh, team. You know, he's saying that criminal cases don't have statute of uh, limitation. <laughs> but he came on this program to give the impression that there is a statute of limitation. Or maybe I misrepresent him, but I recall he talked about Estopel. Now, in their submissions, they also quoted uh, uh, a certain uh, Dayo Akpara, former managing director of, uh, Alphabet. of Alphabeta Consulting. Now, they exhumed all the things that uh, Dayo Akpara said. But the same Dayo Akpara wrote an article over the weekend saying that uh, Tinubu is the best man since uh, the invention of toothpaste. I didn't know that way, that the man has uh, eaten his words. He's now campaigning, the same Akpara is now campaigning uh, for the same Tinubu uh, that he accused of money laundering and of uh, you know, fraudulent practices you know, just uh, a few years ago. So you find some of these uh, contradictions in the various submissions. But I find very instructive the submission by Dr. Adela Kundat. Look, at the end of the day, nothing will come out of this. After February 25, you know, everybody will calm down. Maybe they will drink ice water and everybody will calm down because the battle will have been won and lost. However, the danger in this is that, you know, the stage seems to be set for lack of reconciliation. Because the bitterness is so much, how will people look themselves in the face? After all this uh, conflict, all this uh, crisis, which shows no regard for the rule of law. In fact, the PDP uh, spokespersons, they were so clever, they even accused uh, the uh, APC presidential candidate of humiliating the president, disparaging the president, undermining the president of Nigeria. And they devoted like two paragraphs to that. I said, okay, if the president were to read this, he's supposed to be angry with the candidate of his own party. <laughs> you know. So this is the kind of game that you find. And it's ironic that this is happening. Just when the second uh, National Peace Committee meeting held, mm -hmm. and we had all these presidential candidates there, and they said, you know, uh, they will give peace a chance. It doesn't look like the presidential candidates themselves are talking to their spokespersons. The, the spokespersons are turning this thing into war, and I hope that maybe the National Peace Committee, within the uh, limited time that is available, will, will summon these uh, spokespersons of the political parties, because they are really uh, the issue here. Yeah, the candidates will say, oh, you know, uh, Atiku says, I will not dissent. 
uh, into the arena. Uh, you know, I will campaign on my record. Uh, Bola Chinungu too will say, well, you know, I will stay above the fray. But the uh, spokespersons are not listening to their masters, to their paymasters, which is the unfortunate part. Then to balance it, of course, the APC, uh, uh, Presidential Campaign Council, has also responded through Bayo Nonuga, who in equal measure told his uh, PDP uh, colleagues uh, that uh, they are rehashing old fables and tales, falsehoods that will have no effect, and that he thinks that uh, Atiku Abubakar uh, lacks the character to be a president of Nigeria. Okay, are these the issues we want? Mm. We want these uh, spokespersons and their principals to discuss the issues that affect us directly. Mm. Rather than amplify that, they are advertising to end with uh, Dr. Uh, 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 Adela Kunse point. All that is wrong with Nigeria. Mm. So I'll come to the very first point, and I needed to react to this. Ayo, you said that somebody said that it shouldn't be called a gate. It's a gate. Voila, said it when it. Yeah, it's a gate. You know why? The history of having scandals being called a gate started from Watergate Plaza in America with the Nixon files. Yeah. So this is a gate. And I'm tired of people coming to teach us our jobs here as journalists. I've said that for the opt-in time. And if you are going to do, make better arguments. I like to listen to Wasu Aide Marshall on long drives and long trips. I'm a huge fan, I confess. And he sang a song. He said 2324. That means that's about life. He came back sorrow, the gossip is talking to the gossip. The liar is talking to the liar. 23, 24. And that's what is evident here. Look at them. Look at what they have for Nigerians. Scandals upon scandals. Fights here and there. You're a thief. Oh, you are the bigger thief. I'm a robber. You are the bigger robber. You do drugs. Oh, you steal so much. You do SPVs. At the expense of 200 million Nigerians that are suffering. So that's what we have. He came back case or he wrong parofuro. The gossip talks to the gossip, the liar talks to the liar. At the expense of Nigerians that cannot buy fuel where Petrol is being produced in their backyard. Because this same money they are accusing each other of stealing probably could have been used to turn around the refineries, but nothing has been done. At the expense of these same Nigerians, that their only challenge is that they are Nigerians. They can't go to bed with food in their stomach. They don't have portable water to drink. Somebody once told me, we have a mega city in Lagos. I said, show me public water. At the expense of these same Nigerians that insecurity is destroying. You see, they can never talk about the fuel scarcity. If both campaigns were arguing about how to solve fuel scarcity, I'll say it's meaningful, but they can't talk about it because they are not going to solve it. They don't think about it. They don't think of things like that. The best thing they think of is how to fight each other. And you know why Ikembe Ke Isoro, Irong Parofuro? It's because Ike and Iro are together. Gossip and lies are the same. And they are the same. And Dr. Abati, please, I beg you, sir, don't ever think they can reconcile. They will do it in a heartbeat. Animosity between two politicians that are fighting for the same thing. Any one of them that wins will favor each other. They are all one. Let's not deceive ourselves. Look at the composition of the spokesmen of both parties. I, I don't know from, from former parties. The said person accusing the other candidates of corruption. Where was he five months or six months ago? I ask. That same spokesman that said somebody was a criminal, was a no. thief. Where was he five, six months ago? But now he's crossed to the other camp. Now he can abuse. So they are all one. 
And you see, the funny thing is they like to recruit us, the media, to come and die in their war. And that's why we shouldn't die in their war. We shouldn't even give Philip to their conversations. Because you saw the Yorubas also have a saying that SLO Meso It is the thief that knows where the thief works. So we are not surprised at these conversations. But like you said rightly, I just hope Nigerians will give themselves sense. Because one too many times I am sad we don't make the right decisions. Because these are the same people too that you will see some Nigerians defend to high heavens. And saying they've done for me. They fed my child. They took him to school when nobody was there for me. Yeah. He's my Messiah and my Savior. Mm. At the expense of their common words. I yeah. just hope they think rightly. But I'm not surprised. Like Wasio and Yudim Mashal says, it's a case of 23 24. It can be a case of a wrong, lie, lies to lie. All right, that's about it. Well, thanks.